Okay, we're live, Ted. Welcome back. The regular meeting is back in session. And we are on to personnel certified. And Jason, uh, unless I hear an objection, I'd like to take items A through E grouped together. I recommend all those as written. I just want to comment on one. Can we go to the motion first? But not yet. I'll say that later. No, I'm not there yet. Okay. Okay. And, and just let me go through which oh, what sorry. these items are. There's a child rearing leave request, uh, a student observer request, extracurricular appointments, teacher leaders, and lunch supervision. I'm all set. I don't have anything to say on those. Motion to approve. Letters A through E. Second. Okay, any questions or comments? Okay, I'll pull the board for their vote. Sue? Yes. Harold? Yes. Kristen? Yes. Fern? Yes. Jared? Yes. I vote yes as well. So those are all carried. Uh, unless I hear an objection, I'd like to take items F through J together. And those are coaching recommendations, uh, data analysis and tech implementation support hours, uh, a request to establish an agriculture club, uh, the superintendent's professional goals, and a resignation. Need a motion to approve. Motion to approve. I'll second. Are there any questions or comments? I and this may be executive session, um, the JV and varsity girls basketball, we now looks like co-coaches. We advertise this as JV basketball and varsity basketball. Do we need to um, make a motion that they are, it looks like they're both doing both is what you're presenting. And this is going to make a change in how they're paid, I'm assumed. And I'm not sure that we should vote on that until that's been established because we we advertise for one of each. Or maybe I'm picking at straws, but I just want to make sure we're clear on that because that could the, affect the future. Sal the salaries will be determined based on where they land on based on where they land on the step schedule. So it, it'd be fifty. It's not going to cost us any more than it normally would. So it'd be like a 50 50 split. So. Yeah. Sounds good. I, I don't want to soak them either. I want them to get what they deserve. Okay, However, we're going to follow the same model as far as paying that we do for the under uh, sport that has a system too. So it's, it's going to save us some money. The same as like the wrestler coaches that we did that. Okay. Well, I, I'd like them, I don't know if they pay, but go into executive session because. I have some questions on that. Uh, can you turn your microphone on, please? I don't know if you uh, can table this or go into an executive session with it because uh, I, the way it's being set up is confusing. And then I'd also like to know the, where the pay scales are. What do you need to know? Because we advertised for a JV girls basketball coach and we advertised for a boys varsity coach, but they're being presented as co-coaches, which I don't have a problem with, but we had never, we never, do we need to change that, that we advertised for a position that's now been changed in the process of hiring the people? So if we advertise, I'm not trying to, so I just want to clarify for future because this, I do not want this to get messy down the road. I don't want it to be determined that it's a regular practice. We have a unique situation here and I don't want it to be as we've had complaints in the past about um, it's an established practice so we can't deviate from it. So to be clear, each year if we advertise for a JV coach and a varsity coach, that's what we're looking for. It's not an automatic assumption that someone can apply to be a co-coach. It has to be approved by the board is the way I understood it, that we would approve it at this point. We would approve the appointing of 
the two coaches that are being presented tonight who are both very capable as co-coaches uh, we would approve the change from a JV and a varsity to two co-coaches. I thought we were going to approve that in a motion. We don't. Okay, we don't need to do that uh, because the way it's being the, kind of the way it's being uh, recommended to it's, it's implied. So okay. if, if we approve it as this, it's implied. That it's implied. That, you know, because because Lee's not going to get the whole JV salary. Kaylin's not going to get the whole JV salary. It's going to be split where they land. So it's. Okay, so we do not, because you're recommending it that way, we're actually approving it in front of the board, so we're good there. And then as far as their salaries, they'll remain on the steps that they normally are on. Okay. I'm, I'm, My question was, well, is, okay, once it's at step 24 and once it's at step 5, you're going to combine it and make it step 29 divided by 2? No. Each person would get the Jimmy coming out here. Yeah, have Jimmy answer it. Yeah. The, the way that this goes is that each coach will be paid their step at that level split in half. So, for example, if one of the coaches is at step 20, he would get step 20, divide that rate by two, or divided by uh, divided by half, right? Um, then he would get the JV rate by however many years of service he has for that. You would divide that by two, and then you would add those two numbers together. So, for easy math, if it was 3,000 at the varsity level, you would get 1500 if it was 1000 at the JV level, you would get an additional 500 for a flat 2000 rate at the end. So, again, it does not increase the amount of money um, paid by the district by any means. By going from one sport to another, do they carry over their set? It's carried over by years of experience within the sport. It is the same sport, so it would carry over, but that is not what's being approved tonight. Um, that is what is discussed with, I believe, Mr. DePazio and approved by the board. Um, so that the rates themselves are not, I believe, approved at this time. Right, right? yeah. I mean, so the only way you would approve, I mean, the rates are in the contract which have already been approved. So if we negotiated it. The contract is very hazy on this. But it's not. It, it says very clear what, what the step is. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah. say sport, boys to girls. It says sport to sport. And I've seen other coaches who went from one sport to I came back in the same sport and didn't get steps in yeah. So uh, I, I just want to make sure we're getting equal treatment. That, that may be time. You may be right, but in my experience working with uh, in this district, we have not done. So maybe it's, in the future we should look at how we pay male and female coaches so that there's some equality there? Is it it's not different. It is. It's not different. It's not? Okay. Good then. Yeah. Is okay. there, is this the same exact way we divided salary for wrestling? Yes, it is, Ted, yeah. That makes sense to me, then. I'm satisfied with that. Thank you. All right, so we're going through F through uh, what? J? All right. Thank you F through J, is there any other questions or comments? Okay, I'll pull the board for their vote. Sue? Yes. Harold? No. Kristen? Yes. Ern? Yeah, yes. Was it Jared? Yes. <laughs> You're, and I vote yes as well, Vern. You were vote multiplying there. That's Chicago. <laughs> okay, we're on to personnel classified. I'd like to take items A through D unless there's an objection. Uh, that is additional cafeteria monitors requested, cafeteria monitor, teacher aid, and substitute recommendations. Jason? I just want to comment on once I did get a question from a, from a board member, and I mentioned this at, at the audit committee meeting. With respect to letter A, we do have um, an excess funds in our cafeteria fund, otherwise known as a C fund. Uh, we have not filled these positions. We've had a lot of people come and go across the street. So I'm recommending uh, to be one for student safety and supervision, but two, it also you know, get our cafeteria funds spent down that you approve letter A, and then we have some names to, to then go with it. So that's that. Uh, Kristen and Ted were in the audit committee meeting. You heard John speak about the funds in there. Uh, we are capped what we can have in there, and we need to spend those you know, those funds down, and there is a legitimate need to spend those funds down. So that's letter A and B. A is, a, a is the position, B is a person. So we won't get jammed up once those funds are gone that we... You know, no, no. Okay. Why not, I 
we would be happy. if we run out of money, we'll have to take them out, right? Well, we won't take them out. I mean, it's mostly a joke. Sorry, that's fine. <coughs> yeah. Okay. The cafeteria funds is what they call the C fund is a separate fund. There's sufficient dollars now and the probability is very high to perfect that there'll be sufficient funds in the future to offset the monitors. They're very, they're at the lowest pay and they're very like three hours a day. So it isn't a great deal of money to begin with. And secondly, um, that funding is, is calculated into how we Every year, how we calculate up what it should cost for the funds. We've always, hey, I always hesitate saying we've always done things this way, but, but we have used cafeteria funds to pay for the monitors. Okay. Just, it just so happens this year that we're kind of being dinged on for having too much money, so it makes sense. And we've gone about, you know, we've had Alyssa there supervising, and Jimmy's been supervising across the street, so we need to have you know, put people in the right spots. Thank you. And I could just add in the detailed audit. Uh, presentation that we had earlier uh, we do have too much money in the category got dinged on that and it's due mostly to the federal subsidies for full uh, breakfast and lunch meals for all students year-round and basically we we just got surprised with the amount of federal uh, subsidies that we had so it it got us too high in that particular category category so they do need to be uh, spent down and so I think we're at a point where we need a motion to approve items A through D. Motion to approve. I'll second. And now any additional questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll poll the board for their votes. Sue? Yes. Harold? Yes. Kristen? Yes. Byrne? Yes. Jared? Yes. I vote yes as well. It's unanimous. Uh, to program action items, we need a recommendation. We need a motion to approve the recommendations from the committee on special education and preschool. Special education is printed. Motion to approve is printed. I'll second. Any questions or comments? I'll pull the board for, board for their votes. Sue? Yes. Harold? Yes. Kristen? Yes. Vern? Yes. Jared? Yes. I vote yes as well. And so we are down to round table. And I guess we'll go in the same order. Sue, would you like to start, please? I had something, but I can't remember. So next week, next month. OK. Harold? No, oh, I'd just like to uh, say that the uh, football team um, lost a tough one to uh, Lose the quarter, 17 to 14, but uh, that program's coming along very well. Each year they're getting, each game they're getting better and better. Uh, they were obviously pushed into 11 minute football this year, but they, these kids are pulling together from three different districts and playing hard together. And unfortunately, they've been put into a division where they're playing state ranked teams, but they're, they're doing well. And then the other thing is the mask, and uh, I don't know when it. I wasn't going to come back. I came back today because uh, my wife was going to be here speaking, so I figured I ordered that. But I probably won't be at the next one if the state is still mandating masks. I mean, I need to have other meetings, other places. We don't wear any masks, and we're all still alive. Okay, uh, Kristen. I'm good, thank you. Vern. I wanted to say, uh, I wanted to thank all the staff that made the homecoming a awesome day. Um, from the parade on the Friday through all the activities on the Saturday, it was well organized. The food was great. Seeing everybody here in Lindenville, the parking lot filled, games on fields all over the place, uh, and all the sports that participated. We everybody just it felt great to be part of Lindenville, and it was fun to watch. And I also wanted to thank Coach Hoffey for helping getting enough kids out for the modified program in soccer that almost didn't happen. And they've got 12 kids, and they're currently 6-3, and three, and they're having a great time together. They're fun to watch. Thanks, Coach Hoffey. Okay, thank you. Jared? 
I'll resonate that for homecoming. Um, brought my kids by, loved the food trucks, setup was great. They got to see the excitement of what homecoming is in Lindenville, and I always found that pretty fun and exciting to be a part of. Um, want to wish Lori a speedy recovery and getting better every day. Um, Tanya, thanks for picking up, you know, all of her many tasks and doing it very well. Um, Joanne and Julia for coming in and presenting. They did a great job. You did a great job presenting a 15 minute uh, or 45 minute presentation. I don't know what it was, but I don't know if Jason got through to you on that one, but uh, uh, either way, you've all done a great job. Thank you. I appreciate all the questions. Okay, I'd like to mention normally Gracie Johnson, our new ex officio member would be here, uh, but I believe, Gracie, you haven't joined, have you? She's not here today, no. Yeah. Sent, she sent, sorry, she sent, she sent me an email the last minute, and she cannot make it. She's thrilled to be on, the, to, to be part of this process, but she couldn't make it tonight. But she just sent it, she just sent in a, in a report that you all had, and she'll be here next month, and she's excited. Right, I, and I know she had senior play practice tonight, so. That was probably the issue. Uh, Sharon? I know we all feel the same, and, and we'll be praying for our friend Lori to, uh, for a very speedy recovery. I, I have to thank um, Katie Straczynski, Julia Robinson, Joanne Shura, and Dan Dragula, who all contributed to this academic report. But every single teacher, our paraprofessionals, um, our student achievement, which you know we are on the upswing, really is due to the hard work of every single person. Smiling people in our cafeteria, our custodial staff keeping this place spotless, um, our business department making sure we have all that stuff we need, and and most especially to all of you. So thank you so so very much. Um, I have to do a shout out to our counseling team and Jimmy Zeliff as well. We had a number of students returning really for the first time since they left us in March uh, 2020. And we had some struggling friends and I'm so grateful for the creativity and kindness of our, our faculty and the support of Cassie Fleck, Jeff Kingsbury, Kim Nealon, Penny Berry, and Jimmy Zeliff. Uh, every day is, um, Again, that creative support of, of, of children that are, are, are struggling right now, but it seems to be calming down. So talented folks addressing uh, big needs and a huge thank you to Mary Curtis who picks up her phone all weekend, long weekend. Mary's on the phone with us and, and really uh, calling families. She's just an amazing, wonderful human being and we're blessed to have her. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, I just want to do a, a big thank you and shout out to the business office team for another successful audit. But audits are also a reflection of the entire organization uh, from the top down. So from the board right through to the superintendent, right through the whole organization. So this is really a shout out to the whole organization, another very successful audit. And last but not least, uh, prayers are out with Lori um, for a fast recovery. Thanks. Thank you, Joe. Tanya? Okay, and not being in the room, did I miss anyone? No, you got them all, Pat. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, we now need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. And by show of hands, all in favor? And I vote yes as well. So we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Good night. Thank you, Ted. Good job. Tomorrow. Should we order off the menu now? Yeah, order off the menu.